Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world content. Yesterday I was supposed to deliver you a Lizardman video and unfortunately that failed and I fell back on doing another Bretonian video. Well, I really wanted to do a video this week on one of the armies that isn't currently being supported. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video. I'm going to tackle a Skaven Warlord miniature. It is actually a really nice model. It was the Games Day exclusive miniature from 2010. And it's just a really nice characterful piece that I've had in my collection for a long time. And then I'll paint up for you guys in today's video. Skaven are actually one of my favorite old world armies, even though I never really did a force of them. I bought a bunch of stuff here and there intending to do armies, but never really got around to it. So I am hoping at some stage in my old world collecting to, uh, get a full Skaven army up and running and painted up. I would love to get it organized and uh, basically planned entirely around Clan Eshin, having all the assassins and gutter runners and night runners and all those in it. So I'm not sure if that's even currently possible, but I will definitely look into it. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are literally amazing. Thank you so much for all your continued support. I would not be able to continue doing what I am doing without you. If you're interested in getting involved, there are links in the description below, access to a private Discord server, and an extra video every single week. On top of, of course, supporting the channel and helping it grow are just some of the awesome benefits of being involved. So if that sounds like something that interests you, check it out. Okay, without further ado, guys, let's get stuck into painting a Skaven. And this is the particular Skaven Warlord. He is a quite a nice miniature actually and uh, we recently got a little bit more information about him which I thought was very interesting. The new Bretonian Lord that they showed off uh, a couple of weeks back which was the kind of model that they never released but now they are going to release. He comes with a squire holding his helmet and stuff like that. They talked about that miniature specifically meant to be used for games day but instead was replaced by a Skaven. So this is actually the Skaven that replaced that Bretonian. So I could be painting a Bretonian at this moment but no I'm painting a Skaven. I'm not upset about that, don't worry. It's such a nice model. Even though I do not own a large collection of Skaven in terms of an army, I do own quite a lot of nice Skaven miniatures. Whenever something like this came up, or there was a collection of nice uh, just character pieces, I tended to purchase them and kind of squirrel them away. So I am looking forward to getting an old world Skaven army off the ground and potentially just using as many of those characters as humanly possible. Even if it is things like warlords like this guy here and using him as unit champions for storm vermin or for units, big units of clan rats and stuff like that, just as an excuse to get all the models painted up um, and used. So I think that's a, a good way of doing it. The same for a couple of different armies that uh, got all these backlogs of nice miniatures and there's no way I would ever use all of the characters, you know, 10 wizards for this army. 10 champions for this army well if i use them as actual unit champions then perhaps i'll be able to get them on the table you may have also noticed that if i've done a bunch of um, videos for the old world already that i do like putting characters on a bit of a kind of tall cork to act as like a boulder or rock or stuff like that basically a giant tactical rock i know tactical rocks are not for everybody some people despise them i love adding extra height to characters so that when you look across an army those characters stand out and I think this is even more evident in a game like the old world when you have these big blocks of, you know, 40 troops and they're all kind of the same height. And then you see one that's taller. He's standing head and shoulders above the rest. You know that's a character or a champion or, or someone of note. That always made me smile. So I'm going to continue to do that even if it's not for everybody. Obviously, you can just glue this guy flat to a base if you want to. Or any Skaven hero flat to a base. I personally like buying teapot coasters from Ikea and pulling them into a million pieces to use as boulders. So I'm going to start with Dark Oath Flesh and apply this to all of the skin areas. Which on a Skaven is his feet, his hands, his face. Not going too far back because he's got a lot of fur around his cheeks and chin, his ears. And don't forget that all-important Skaven tail. It is one of those funny things where there's an extra area of skin to paint whenever you're painting this kind of uh, creature, a Skaven. So don't forget it, it's, it's kind of a, a key feature of them. Whenever you read any novels or books that involve Skaven, the uh, the tails are always such a focal point of their kind of mannerisms and stuff. They can chew on their own tails and they're nervous or it gets excited, it waves a little bit. It's all sorts of different things, but it's a, it's a nice little piece of miniature to paint. So once we have all that skin done, I then decided I needed to pick the cloth color. And from then I just started to get a bit, I don't know, more worried. I was like, what, what, what cloth color am I going to paint this? This is making a big decision here as to what my Skaven army is going to be because I do want a full Skaven army. 
and I started to rack my brain through the like traditional colors. So I do red, which is the, the kind of warlistic clan, one of the largest clans. I don't particularly want to do any pestilence stuff. I've done Nurgle for a bunch of different fantasy armies before. And Age of Sigma armies. And I don't think I want to include pestilence with my Skaven army to any great I've got some plague sensor bears that I would love to use, but I don't think I'm going to use plague monks or a plague claw catapult or a sensor bear or any of the any of those other bits. So I turned to this old relic in my collection, uniforms and heraldry of a Skaven, and I started to ponder through different clans, reading a little bit about them and trying to figure out which clan would suit me the best. And the one I ended on was a quite an interesting one and something that's a little bit more. A little bit different so obviously i stopped on clan moors for a while that's the red armored or the red cloth and red armored one which had the one of the largest clans in skavendom and i did read there a little bit of lore and was trying to make a decision of whether that was going to be the clan for me but i've argued with myself a few times now with the amount of red and black armies that i do that i decided i would do something a little bit different these are one of the clan Eshin ones clan rictus Mordkin, Septic. There's so many. This book is so good. But then this one, Clan Scurvy, which use yellow cloth and silver armor. And basically they are pirates. They are pirates, Skaven. They have a huge flotilla of Skaven warships that they they have in the underground sewers, big barges and stuff like that. So I read that, had another flick back through the book and decided to come back to these guys and was like, yes, Clan Scurvy is going to be at least what my warlord and all my slaves and clan rats and storm vermin are going to be all from this particular clan i do think i want to try and fit as much eshin in as humanly possible when i build the army like i said in the intro i'm not 100 percent sure i need to actually go and read the, the entry for skaven and find out what exactly you can take these days because there's a lot of weird things these days where you know you can only take one clan molder engineer and one you know what I mean? like not as many as there used to be whereas i personally would like to have a couple of different assassins and a bunch of different night runners and good runner units but i'm I have a strange feeling that they're going to be restricted slightly so before i go and run away and create this beautiful army in my head i better make sure it's actually possible first so obviously these are skaven so even though they are having yellow cloth they're not bright and vibrant and beautiful like elven it's going to be dirty and grimy and dark so um Nasdreg yellow was the perfect yellow starting point. It's a really dark browny mustard color. It's actually a really nice tone and the contrast for it is fantastic. So I applied that to all the cloth, the inner parts of the shield, and either bits of fabric that I find some of the cloth hanging off his uh, weapon and bits like that. Black Templar contrast was then brought in just for piping and connecting ducts and all those kind of weird bits that connect his uh, power pack to his, his big uh, spear thing. I don't know what that is really. Is it a... I don't even know what it is. What weapon would you call that? A halberd, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, that's got cabling to para connected to its backpack where it's obviously getting infused with all that warp stone. There is a couple of like giant chunks of like warp stony energy. There's a big ball on the end of the weapon, big ball in his backpack, and then a huge warp stone crystal that's in the backpack itself, which is powering the whole thing. We'll get to that a little bit later. Lead belcher was then used for obviously all the armor trim. The uh, cross sections on the shield, his huge big weapon. And obviously, this video is not intended for you guys to paint up this exact miniature in this exact scheme kind of thing. It's not the purpose of it. I'm sure a lot of people out there who are buying and collecting starting scaving armors for the old world um, won't be going on eBay and spending you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 euro for this particular old model. But obviously, all the skills in painting this guy can be translated over to creating your own scaven army. So if any of you brave skaven clan leaders out there want to join me in creating a clan scurvy army then this video will help you obviously when i jump along and do eshin units i will do videos on how to do those i would love to do a video on how to paint and um, the plague sensor bear so we'll be doing some pestilence videos as well and then things like rat ogres and gisales and i'd love to do a warp lightning cannon a screaming bell there's all those awesome units out there that i've wanted for so long but i think it's about time i got a stuck in and did them do i think they're going to be one of my next armies no i'm going to finish my bretonians first and then i'm really really struggling with what the second army is going to be i did want it to be wood elves but i don't think i'm going to get my hands on enough wood elves anytime soon so potentially i'm going to go back maybe do some high elves or beastmen maybe oh there's so many different options what a time to be in the hobby i love it 
Okay, after that, we grabbed our Balthazar gold and we basically wanted to mix it up with the metallic. So we're going to add a coppery tone into loads of it. So basically just pick alternating panels and plates and anywhere else you think any valves or any bits. If you think the model has too much silver on it, just add in the brass as the opposite color. You could even have done it on the shield there. So the outside of the shield could have been silver and the inner section of the shield could have been bronze. I'm literally saying this now in hindsight, wishing I had done that now. I only just realized that that, that would have helped look because I didn't really like how the shield turned out. But if I had done the whole inside section, the clan symbol in brass, that would look really good. Well, you never know. Okay, after that, all the base cuts are going to be on. So I grabbed some Seraphim Sepia and applied this to the entire guy just to uh, shade him down nicely. Darken down, muddy up all those different details. It's going to make the silver nice and grimy. Obviously, all the skin, the fur, all those bits and pieces. Sepia is going to be the perfect shade for it. It even works beautifully over the Nasdrag yellow. It gives me a really nice point to start layering from. And obviously, before I go on and start a layering process, and while I've got some time, while the bases are, while the shade is drying, I'm going to get working on the base, which is a very quick thing. I'm basically decided that I think most of my old world armies are going to be based exactly the same. I'm going to just have like a unifying basing theme, except for perhaps my dwarves and my night goblin. They might be an underground cavern style army. I know Skaven should kind of be in that thing too but i think i want to add a little bit of color with some tufts and grass and all that kind of stuff so Averland sunset is then brought in to layer up the yellow cloth now one of the things that i did do which i didn't show on camera is i actually diluted this a tiny bit not with water but with plague bear flesh contrast which is a weird thing i wasn't sure whether i was going to talk about it but i just wanted to add it just a bit more of a grimy just a slight green tint and i mean it's very slight you don't even notice it but i think it does something really nice to the yellow and makes it the perfect color to highlight the skaven this way like if you had just gone to straight Averland sunset i figured it would be a little bit too bright a little bit too flat and a little bit too clean looking i think the addition of the nasdar sorry of the plague bear flesh thinning down the Averland sunset just set the tone of the yellow off perfectly and i was super happy with it and something that I will obviously continue doing for all the rest of my Skaven. It's a really funny thing. I find it really difficult to paint armor paneled yellow, but I find it really easy to paint cloth yellow. I don't know why that is, but smooth flat surfaces in yellow, nightmare. Give me as many folds and creases as you want in fabric. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do and I'm exactly how I'm going to make it look nice, or at least it's nice enough that I'm happy with it. Maybe I'm just going crazy though. So with the yellow all done, that's all I did, by the way. One coat of yellow highlight. This is a Skaven army after all. There's there's a uh, hundred miniatures to paint in this force. So there's no way I'm going to multi-stage highlight all the different bits and pieces. I did work a little bit over time on the skin on this guy because I was kind of finding my feet. So for instance, in this one, I jumped up to Cadian Flesh Tone. And then I will show on camera that I went from there into Kislev Flesh. And then I added some Berserker Shade, and then I went back with Kislev Flesh. So, realistically, by the time I was finished applying the first coat of Kislev Flesh, I thought the skin was just a bit too pale. I wanted it to be a bit more pinky, like they describe it on the books. So that's where the Berserker Blood Shade comes in. So, if you were to follow along, I think what you should do is apply the Cadian Flesh Tone now. Then apply the uh, Berserker Blood Shade over the skin, and then do one highlight with the Kislev Flesh, and that would be beautiful. That would be all you would need to do um, to get a really nice kind of pinky tone. You can see now, after I apply this Kislev, you will notice it goes a little bit too pale. I would have just taken this particular clip out, but I do like to leave my failures in videos as much as possible as well. Just to show you that it's the same for all of us. We all blunder our way through painting miniatures, especially when they're the test piece for an army. Some things go right, though. Some things go wrong. You learn. You learn what steps you need to cut out or any extra steps you need to add in in order to make this work. I think especially if you're, you're not trying to paint competition pieces, you're being a little bit more realistic with your expectations for painting miniatures, especially armies. I think that's an important step, an important thing to learn. You don't get a model quite right it's okay he's going in a unit of 50 other dudes nobody's gonna notice 
Berserker Bloodshade is a fantastic shade and it's one I don't use enough because I don't remember it exists. It only came out kind of a year or two ago, um, so it wasn't part of the, the last 350 paints that I've been using. And I'm still remembering that some of those newer paints, the last batch, exists. I tend to reach for alternatives. I was actually looking for a Carrienburg Crimson and then I found this and was like, oh yeah, that exists. Okay, yeah, that's actually a really good choice for this particular part. But if you don't have it and you have Carrienburg Crimson, you can just substitute that if you want to. I'm sure it won't make too much of a difference. Lead Belch was then brought in to use as a highlight for all the metallic. So as you can see, I'm adding some very quick scratchy highlights to all the metallic bits. This is after all panel beaten Skaven armor and equipment. It is by no means forged well, which is a funny thing because Skaven do actually make some of the most complicated contraptions and machines in the old world. Perhaps the most complicated after Lizardman, maybe. But they're just not very polished in the uh, final result. Things tend to explode or misfire or all sorts of craziness. So that kind of reflects in their equipment and gear. So as you can see, I am being very quick, and that's the kind of thing I was talking about the scratchy highlights. This, this footage isn't sped up, this is the speed that I'm highlighting the metallics, adding those lines, not really overthinking it. From here, I'm just going to add a quick uh, coat of paint to his teeth, and for that I'm just going to grab Xandru Dust. I do go back in later on with a Screaming Skull, and do another little highlight on the teeth on the bottom tips. Whether or not I caught that on camera, not 100% sure, but yeah. Sandra Dust is one of my go-to paints for uh, base coating teeth and nails. It just works so well. And depending on how bright you want, it's kind of always the base coat for my teeth. And then depending on what kind of creature it is, is it something that has like well-made, well-formed teeth? Then you would go with something quite brighter. Or if it's something that's kind of old and horrible and doesn't really take care of them, then perhaps you would go for like a Morgas bone for the highlight. There's loads of options out there and I think it works a treat. I then grabbed some pure bold titania white from Pro Acryl and I painted all the things that are the glowing warp stone effect. So obviously the two big orbs, one built into his backpack, one built into his weapon, and then he has a, a giant piece of warp stone in his backpack, which is obviously powering all these constructions or contraptions. I then did a couple of steps to finish those off. Obviously you can do whatever you want for your glowy gemstones. You can do them all sorts of colors, but obviously Warpstone traditionally is green, but there's nothing to say that you have to paint your ones green. So if there's an accent color or something you think will complement your Skaven army better, then swap the color to red, red stone, or red Warpstone, or blue Warpstone, or whatever color of Warpstone you want, your toys. A bit of pure red to paint his beady little eye. He only has one eye on show, the rest is covered by his, his mask. Which is kind of cool. Some Warp Lightning Contrast was then used, funny enough, and applied all over the bits. We painted with the pure white color to start the, uh, the glowing green effect. Now, I didn't include the rest of the steps for painting that in my video. The video was just trailing on a little bit too long. So what I did do is I just got some Warpstone Glow um, layer paint and I ended up layering these orbs and then I added some Ard Coat to them after that to make them shiny. So they do look like they're kind of glowing green orbs. So if you want to follow on and have them look exactly like they look at the end of this video, those are the missing steps um, that I didn't show in the video. Katachan flesh was used to highlight all the straps and all the fur on this particular guy. Checking my time, once again, quick highlights. Nothing crazy is required don't get it all it's okay the base coats are already there for the brown you're just looking for the highest points just add a touch of highlight it is a dark brown fur so you don't need to go crazy the attention is definitely stolen by the rest of the paint scheme anyway and then we're going to add some nilic oxide i was playing around with this a little bit late earlier and people seem to enjoy it and wanted to see me use it a little bit more so your wish is my command i used it on my usheron model so I'm going to use it on this Skaven Warlord. And just like that, all I'm doing is painting it around rivets. And like I said, people always get confused at how this paint is supposed to be used. And it's very, very simple. Oxidization happens where water pools. So just look at a piece and think of if this thing was in the rain, where's water going to pool? 
where water pools is where the rust and oxidation is going to happen. So lots of crevices, lots of crease around bolts. They're going to hold a little bit of water. Like if you were doing like the symbol on the shield, you would do the, the kind of bottom parts. You wouldn't paint the top, like the underneath the lip because that wouldn't have water. And with that, we have our finished Skaven Warlord. Can't remember the last time I painted a Skaven miniature, but uh, it feels really good. Really pleased with the result. And I definitely need to get some other miniatures based up and ready for him to uh, fight alongside. I've gotten some dark pictures to go alongside him. I figured a Skaven are notoriously going to be in sewers and stuff like that. So you're going to see them in this kind of shaded gloom more than anything else. I love how the yellow looks in this light. It's so cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this and please let me know what's the next Legacy Army video that you want to see. There we have it. My Skaven Warlord is now painted up and ready to lead, well, at least the clan rap portion of my Skaven Army whenever I get started on that. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know you're still enjoying the Old World content and please let me know all the future content you want for the Old World. In my head, I still have to deliver Lizamon, an Ogre, Dark Elves, Vampire Counts, is that all the other discontinued ones right now? I think it is. So those are all planned for the future. And then of course the standard nine factions that is currently available is of course gonna be getting a lot more videos. So if you're excited by all things Old World, then please make sure you stick around, subscribe so you don't miss out and uh, make sure you give the video a like if you did enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.